I don't even know what to say no more. I've done this video like three times, and I met I was like, I don't know how pregnant women eat. I'm not showing you nothing. You can't see nothing. And I just, I've been practicing since getting raspy cost more truer in terms to what extremes my mom i'm sorry and don't worry i got my brush to time for yourself I mean, you always got the true you get to ex except my fingernails i usually do them a little better they are my hands are So here it is, the moment of zen. Here at the Bangkok airport, looking for my airplane. <laughs> it's probably next to that Malaysian airplane. I shouldn't say that. How, it, that's, that's rude of me. So anyway, oh, I found it, there it is. I just went the wrong direction. So anywho, Time to leave. Time to go back home. Not happy. Got a lot of luggage though. You want to see what I bring? I mean, I bring everything and anything. Look at that. This is like fucking... You know, those were bright orange when I first came over here. Crazy, right? So anyway, let's go through baggage. Get through all that garbage. I shall return. Still in Bangkok. <laughs> Just a little bit. One thing you gotta make sure you do is you gotta make sure you get a front row seat. I thought I asked the lady to do that. She crammed me in between two seats, there ain't no leg room and it sucks. Especially after surgery. There ain't no room! I got these seats just crammed in here. But that's the price we pay. Hopefully my next flight, they gave me a front row seat. I asked the lady to do it. We'll find out. This is only six hours. So, we'll see. I guess we're leaving Bangkok. We're heading off to sell them. <laughs> Smiles still on my face. I got plenty of painkillers. Life is good. <laughs> Let's go to Seoul. I'll talk to you then. <laughs> Hi, it's me. It's Jessica. Shh, be a little bit quiet. I think I got neighbors here and there. I'm in a hotel room at Seoul International Airport with a, oh my gosh, what is that? It is a bed. It is time to dilate. <laughs> so the flight over was crowded as you saw. Like squeeze me in there. This is something you gotta do. This is something I should have done better planning. I should have, you know, taken economy on the way there, taken first class on the way back because Korean Air they have seats. You could stretch your legs out for miles. I mean, they got some good seats, so it's my fault I didn't get them. That being said, after I finished the video with you, believe me, Dr. Chetowit did give me a letter, uh, a medical letter, which I still have with me in case I need it again. Basically saying that, you know what, I need to stretch my legs out. This is a medical condition. I'm not really supposed to be walking. You know, I'm supposed to be taking it easy. And I showed him that letter, you know, saying, hey, I did have SRS. It does say that in the letter. It says you're a post op, pretty much. So, um, they talked around. They got me hooked up. They put me in a seat. I had leg room. Korean air really went out of the way. So, I mean, it's still a kind of tight spot. It's not first class, but. You know, it is what it is. They actually went out of their way to help me. So, now it's my turn. 
Um, it's 6.30 now. I leave at 10.30. I figure I can take a shower. I can dilate. Um, something important to do because I got a 15-hour flight the rest of the way. So this gives me an opportunity to do that. Um, of course, it cost me over 100 bucks, But, you know, hey, it is what it is. So it's all good. It's all good. So next time I talk, we'll be boarding the plane. So here we are, we're finally leaving Seoul, getting ready to head over to Dallas. Can you believe that? So a little break in the hotel, you know, you get what you pay for. <laughs> it's got to get done, right? So you gotta, that's what you got to do. You got to think about how much, you know, it's worth, you know, to, go, to take a break, it's like a five hour layover. Be like a 24-hour flight without dilating so the hotel room expensive yes but you know what it's worth it in the long run so you, you got to really start when you're planning trips like this you, you on your way back you gotta you gotta think about this stuff you know what you want to do so anyway we're kind of crowded as you can see um, a little bit more crowded than what it was when I was there one thing that was good <laughs> People are interrupting my leg room here. Um, they did assign me a different seat. Obviously, they gave me a little more. I'm assigned to leg room. So that's good with the doctor's letter. Um, Korean Air really, you know, they do, they bend over backwards. So if you have a doctor's note like I had saying you need to stretch your legs out, I would definitely go with them if you can. Um, other airlines will do the same, I guess. It's just, I don't know. I'm happy with these guys, so it's all good. <laughs> so we're going to take off. We're going to go to Dallas. I'll talk to you when I get there. <laughs> Hi, it's me. It's Jessica. Um, I made it back to Dallas. I'm in Dallas. The, the plane, you know what? It is what it is. Um, you know, six hours of it from Bangkok to Seoul isn't so bad. But then you got a layover, or even if you go to Tokyo, whatever. It's just a short little flight. But it's a flight over. That's the big one. Um, Fifteen hours just alone in the last segment. I mean, you can imagine just sitting down in one spot. Fifteen hours. It's not fun when you're not. I mean, when you're normal, when you're healthy. When you just get done with surgery and you got muscles pulling in your groin, you know, just stretching and pulling, you know, and when you're sitting down and it's like, oh, it's uncomfortable, you can get up and walk around, but for 15 hours and you're cooped up in it, I mean, it's not like you can go outside and get some fresh air. I mean, <laughs> it is what it is. So definitely think of that. If you need to fly first class, give yourself more leg room on the way back, do that. Fly, fly economy on the way there. Do what you need to do. Obviously with Korean Air, um, they did cram me in between another seat on the way back. I was able, I showed them the letter, which is a very big letter. Um, I don't have it handy. What did I do with it? Anyway, I don't have it handy. <laughs> Otherwise, I'd read it to you. Let me find it. Is that what I'm going to Oh, here it is. Okay, I found it <laughs> in my fanny pack. Um, which is pretty much a good little letter. And, you know, people will read it. You'll have to show it to them. Um, your doctor, even if you pick, don't pick Chadawet, should write you a letter similar to this. Um, but it's just basically a medical certification, you know, it's a little stamp, a signature. But it says, to whom it may concern, Jessica Sims has undergone gender reassignment surgery and breast augmentation surgery. So it's right here. It's not hiding. Okay, so it's not like you can go on a plane and hide. No, they tell you, you know, um, in Bangkok on February 24th. She is now healthy enough to return home by airplane to fly. Um, are fit to fly, and I would appreciate it if you can arrange a special seat 
so that she can fully stretch the legs and also a wheelchair so she can go to and from. I didn't need the wheelchair, I turned it down. They were gonna offer me a wheelchair. But it's like I got my carry-on luggage and a wheelchair, no. So, um, and should you need any further questions, call this person, yada, yada, yada. So, showing them this letter on both flights, they stuck me in the front row where I was able to stretch my legs out. Um, even the 15 hours, I mean, there was a wall right in front of me, but I was able to stretch my feet out and just sort of kind of prop my feet up on the wall so I, my feet were raised, it was comfortable, but 15 hours you're sitting on your butt and it's like, my gosh, it drives you crazy. So even with the letter, even with the good seat, prepared for to be like uncomfortable. And I left a week late. So you think, you know, you'd get to surgery and you get 28 days, boom, you're gone. And it's like, I was there an extra week and I'm still uncomfortable. <laughs> okay. So, the flight over was the worst. It's over now. I'm back home. I'm in Dallas. I'm staying here in the hotel. I'm going to be growing my beard out so I can do the electrolysis. I already have an appointment for the 31st. I got to contact them and confirm it. Um, but I'm here in the hotel so I can hide and not show my face. And I'll make a video about that later. But just plan for the trip. Um, obviously, they didn't lose my airplane. My airplane made it all the way to America. Um, no Bermuda Triangle, no nothing, no aliens. So, I mean, I'm home. I'm, nothing's changed. People look at me and treat me the same, you know, as they did before I left. I mean, I'm not gonna see what's down there, and obviously, the, you know, the top surgery, um, even though the camera's not showing it at this video because it's on the refrigerator. <coughs> Yeah, see, it's nothing a, a padded bra can do. And it's a nice little hotel. I mean, it's not the best. Got a little kitchenette, a little fridge, you know, a shower, a little single bed. You know, hey, for $200 a week, I can't bitch. <laughs> so, anyway, I'm going to get ready. I'm going to do a few things today, but, um, you know, you just got to be true. Uh, you got to be yourself. Even if it means you have to have a letter to be yourself, stretch your legs out. I can only imagine 15, you know, hours being cooped up in between two seats, stretching and hugging, and it's like, <sighs> it's crazy. You got to be true. You got to be yourself. Them two things right there. Until next time.